Laio Adedamola Dilmuna says we should begin to share. She is very right. Idris, welcome. Ugo Shuku, welcome. Maria Obina Nkem Rotimi Fumi Rai Mark from Cape Town uh, Obara, Oba, Obaro Mashu Pastor Irene Nkiru Ishiarin uh, Ulysses Ismail Is, Isong Lola Shorunka is there as well Let's go ahead and share the message if you don't mind. Let's go ahead and begin to share the link. So please look for your link. Uh, favored Jackson. Wow, favored. Uh, Shori, Shonira. Uh, yeah, so go look for your share button. And let's start. If you have shared it, then we could begin immediately. Uh, okay, if you are ready. If you are ready, we are ready to go. You remember what we began to talk about this morning? Uh, what we began to talk about this morning is why are we here as humans, as human beings, why are we here? Why did God send us here? What do we come here to do? What is our mission? Because if we don't understand our mission here on earth, if we don't understand where we are coming from, where are we going, why are we here, we will never be able to make a difference. We will never be able to fulfill the calling for which God has called us. So I'm continuing that topic that we started this morning. And this is a new series about God and about the kingdom of God. I'm going to be talking about why we are here. Why did God send us here to the world? And I think that this topic is very, is so, so important that we will find it, you know, the most exciting topic. Like I said, I ended up this morning's message you know, obstructly. I didn't, I didn't plan to end it. I think it was just the internet that cut off. But what I ended up saying, let me actually start from where I started. I, 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 from where I stopped. I was talking this, I was telling, sharing with you the story of my assistant pastor that went with me to Nigeria and we went to the top 10 churches in Nigeria, you know, meeting with, visiting the churches, being in the congregation and then meeting with the big men of God. Uh, you know, they were praying for us and talking to them, but also studying what was going on. So after two or three weeks, maybe four weeks of staying in Nigeria, this, my pastor, my assistant pastor, refused to go to church. He said, we'll not go again. He will stay in the hotel. What was the problem? He said, well, I will go for you to take my, to just to assist me, but that he would, you know, he would just do it for me. I said, what was the problem? He said, because this is not the God you preached to us about in the Ukraine. If, it had, if you had preached this kind of church, I mean, this kind of God that where they are preaching in Nigeria and Ukraine, nobody would have been in your church. I wouldn't have been in that church, he said. And I said, what was the problem? He said, because we have been in Nigeria for five weeks and nobody, no, not a single church for five weeks, that's like over one month, we didn't visit a church where everybody spoke about God or thought about God. Nobody, there was no church in Nigeria where we had people talking about how to love God more, how to know God better, how to walk with Him, how to be His friend, how to fellowship with Him, how to draw Him closer to yourself. Nobody talked about that. The only thing, the only time people will mention God will be that God will bless you today. God will prosper you today. Your breakthrough will come today. Your breakthrough is now. God will do this for you. Before the end of this month, God will do this. Before the end of next month, God will do this. God will. So he was telling me what actually, the, you know, there is no God in these churches. I said, what do you mean? No God. The only God that is in these churches are the God of self. 
the God of ego, the God of egocentrism. People are worshipping themselves. They are only using God as the means to get what they need. So people are simply using God to get what they need. People are not worshipping God, they are worshipping themselves. People are not worshipping God, they are worshipping their needs. People are not worshipping God, they, are, they build these altars, these cathedrals and these churches only for themselves, for their needs to be met. And they are only using the name of God, invoking the name of God, invoking the name of God for miracles, invoking the name of God for prosperity, invoking the name of God for something. You know, whereas... He said, if, okay, what about me? If I'm a white person, I'm a European, and I don't need breakthrough, I don't need to be healed, I don't need to be, you know, delivered, I don't need to be blessed, I don't, I am already blessed, I know I'm blessed, I, you know, I already have all that in the Bible, so it means God is not for me, so if I don't need all those things, I shouldn't go to church. It's so it means God of Nigerian God, the God that we preach in those churches, they are irrelevant to me if I'm doing good. So that God will never appeal to Dan Gote. That God will never appeal to you no know, Bill Gates because they are okay. So that God is only appealing to people who are desperate, people who are in need. And they, they, so it's not because of God they are going, but really God created us for his purpose. God created us so that we will be fulfilling his will and his desires on the earth. God created us so that we might, you know, be an instrument on the earth that is using to fulfill his agenda, his purpose, and his program on the earth. And But the way we are doing it is that we are using God to fulfill our desires. So we are just going to God, make, we know that he is there, and we are just calling on him so that he will be used. We are the ones using God. God is not the one using us. We are the ones using God to meet our selfish needs. And you know, you remember when he talks about the, will, uh, about the lost prayers, he says that you pray that the will of God will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But we have turned that around. What we are now doing is that we are causing our will, which is already on earth, or the things that we need on earth, my desire on earth, we are now talking to God so that he will do it in heaven. It's supposed to be the opposite. It's supposed to be about what he needs to be done on the earth. It's supposed to be about what he is having happening already in heaven that will bring the reality of heaven to the earth. It's supposed to be about him, about his desires. That's why he said, let thy kingdom come. Let thy will, not my will, in the, on the earth should be done as you know in heaven as it is in on, on with my heart on the earth. Let his will that is in heaven be done as he wishes it to be done on the earth as he wants it to be done. I am his instrument here on the earth. I am alive to fulfill his purpose. So the question is, why are we here on the earth? Why are we here? Why are you created? What is the paramount reason for your creation? Why did God send you here to the earth? Is he a time waster? Is God just wasting his time? Is just God is just simply messing around? Is God just, you know, without duty, without occupation, without work, and he doesn't know what to do? And that's why he just decided to throw all of us here for nothing, say? No. In the morning, I began to say, God is a God of intentions. God is a God of purpose, clear purpose. God does not do anything. He does not set anything in motion without being clear about what he wanted in the first place from the very beginning. So God is a God of finished intentions before those intentions were even set in, in process, in progress. Before the thing was even kickstart, he has already finished. So before you were created, before you were even conceived in your mother's womb, God already ordained some certain program that you must do and must fulfill for him on the earth. And that's why you are even conceived in the first place. So we are all sent here for a purpose. Now, that is individually talking. But what about talking about us as human, as humanity? Why are we all here as human beings? Why are we all here as humanity in the first place? So, and we see that purpose in the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 1, and I explained to you why Genesis is so crucial, he says, let us make man. It's God talking. Because it's God talking, God is expressing his own intention. He's expressing his own heart's desire. It's not leaving us with doubt. It's not leaving us with, you know, guesswork. It's not saying we should guess to find out, you know, what he wanted us to do or what he sent us here for. He is not leaving us to be guessing. This is not a guesswork. He is 
saying it by himself as the first person. He's saying God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and God the Son, they are all coming together to say, let us make man in our own image. And in that statement, we could see the very purpose why he created us. He created us so that we might be his own replica. God created us so that we might be his replica on the earth, his duplication on the earth, so that we might be here to focus on him, to focus our heart, our whole being on pleasing him, on bringing him to the earth, on manifesting him, on demonstrating him, on revealing his purpose and his, his intention, on demonstrating him to the world, on letting everybody know who he is. And that is why I said in the morning that in this country, I live in the country where people say they are atheists. I live in a country where people say they are communists. I live in a country where people say they are agnostics, that they don't believe in God. And you know what I do? My response, I go on the national television, pay the national TV, and that's why you need money. I pay for the program, for the TV program, give them money and say I need to do an interview or I need to do a program. I go and give a speech. I say any one of you that say you don't believe in God in this city, I challenge you to come to see me. Because when you see me, all your doubts will disappear. When you see me, you will stop doubting if there is God or there is no God. When you see me, you will quit looking for God. You don't need to look for God when I'm in this city. You don't need to look for God when I'm in this country. Because he has already said, he created me. He called me to be his servant. He made me in his image. He made me in his likeness. He lives in me. And if he lives here in me, I know where God is. If you can find me, you find God. And that is why we call our church Embassy of God. God lives here. We know the address of God. We know where God dwells in. There is no, no, no sense, no, no reason for people to be looking for God when you are there in that city. If you are in that city, if you are in that town, nobody should be ambiguous about God. Nobody should be thinking, is there God or there is no God? Nobody should be questioning God or querying God. You are there to be his revealer. You are there to be his revelator. You are there to be his carrier. You are there to be his imposer. God made us in his own image for a purpose. What purpose? Because God is a spirit. I can see him with my naked eyes. Other people cannot see him with their naked eyes. So he decided to make himself visible. God decided to make himself an image. To make himself a replica that will not be only invisible this time, but a replica that will be visible, a replica that will be tangible, so that when I'm talking to people who operate in the tangible world, who operate in the divisible world, who operate in the natural and material world, so that those same people can now see God in their own mode of operation. And their mode of operation is material. Their mode of operation is tangibility. Their mode of operation is seeing visibility so that when they see me they will not say God is invisible anymore he has become visible in me he has become visible in God this is one major intention in the heart of God when he created man God needed his replica walking on the face of the earth carrying his image carrying his character carrying his, 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 his essence Carrying his, 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 his core in him, carrying his nature, carrying his extension. We are supposed to be the extension of his nature, the extension of his love, the extension of his essence. That is why we are here. If you are living for anything else, otherwise or different from being a carrier of God, if you are pursuing any other goal, you have missed the road, my brothers. You have missed the road, my sister. Your greatest pursuit in life, your greatest aspiration in life must be 
that you will gladden the heart of God by being his replica, by being his reproduction, by being his, uh, his, his model on the earth, by being his, 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 uh, his imitation on the earth. That is why we're here. We are supposed to reflect him. We are supposed to be his reflection. That is why he said, we want, uh, the goal of us making man is that man would now reveal us to the physical earth. Man will now be the one revealing God to other men. Man will now be the one speaking to other people and making God visible to other people. And But with the way we have now treated God, we are treating God as if I'm nobody, I am nothing. Oh God, have mercy on me. Oh God, give me paper, give me my... Um, blessing, give me, oh, help me finish my enemy, help me resolve, deliver me from enemy, uh, do this to me. You are insulting God with your prayers. You are insulting God with your prayers. You lack understanding and that is our biggest problem. We don't know God. We don't understand his heart. We don't understand it's our desire. We don't seem to understand who we are even. And that is why one of your main purpose on earth must be to understand where you come from. To understand who created you. So that you will stop praying those insulting prayers. So that you will stop behaving like as if you are, you are not even related to him. As if you are not carrying his nature. As if you don't have any familiarity or similarity or even acquaintances with his nature. You remember when uh, Philip be, tried to behave like that in the New Testament. It frustrated Jesus. It made him angry. It angered him. It, it provoked the Lord Jesus. Because he was trying to ask Jesus... Why? We, can you show us the Father? We've been working with you. We've been living with you all this while. Will you let us, will you show us the Father? If you could show us the Father, that's enough for us. He was trying to be pious. He was trying to be really, look really nice and good. But that was a stupid act of pious, pious, piousness. He was trying to demonstrate. That was, you know, it, it, it was something irritating to God. Because to Jesus, because Jesus said, I have been with you all the while. I've been with you all these years. And you are still telling me to show you the Father? You are breaking my heart. Then you don't know anything. If you see me, you have seen the Father. If you see me, you have seen the Father. And the way I want you to live after me is for you to know that from this day will you know that I am in you, and you are in me. And he that believeth in me, you will know, therefore, that God is in him. So that when I'm gone, you will no longer be telling people to go look for God in heaven. When I'm God, when I'm gone, you will no longer be telling people to go look for God in the temple. When I'm gone, you will no longer be telling people to go look for God in some prayer meetings or in some night videos or something like that. Even though those things are okay, but they should be able to find God in you. You should be able to manifest God. You should be able to reveal God just like I am revealing him. That's why Jesus was not intimidated when he, they, they said, who are you? Show us the Father. I don't need to show you the Father. If you see me, you see the Father. Because I and the Father are one. I don't, think, I don't seem to be seeing Christians who are aware of this truth these days. I don't seem to be coming across Christians who are aware that they and the Father are one. We have put Jesus in a pedestal, in a, in a pedestal, in a category by himself. We have removed him from being a model to us, an example that must be followed. And he said we must, we must be like him, we must behave just like him. He said we will know that we are in him and he is in us. But religion has scared us away so much that we are even afraid of even admitting what God said we are. 
And why do not why do we lack the confidence of being able to talk like that? That I and the Father are one? Because we are not one with the Father. So how do I become one? How do I fulfill? And how do you fulfill that mission of being one with the Father? Of being a God revealer and a God revelator, a God replica and a God image on the earth? That is your ultimate assignment. So that when you are at work, you are revealing Christ by the way you look, by the way you touch, by the way you speak. People are not even having questions anymore. People relate to you and they want to come closer to him. They saw them in the eyes of the apostles and without even asking for their identity, they said, we know these ones are Christians. They look like Christ. They carry the image of Christ. They are Christ's revelation and revelators. They reveal God even without us asking them questions. That is the essence of Christianity. Christianity is not a religion. It should no more be a religion. We have turned into religion. We have turned into religion. We have turned into religion. But And that is why we must read the Bible. But the reason we read the Bible is not to be religious. The reason we read the Bible, let me tell you this now, is for us to be able to discover our prototype. God is our prototype. We are made in his image. You know what a prototype is? A prototype is like Mercedes Benz that want to produce a new model of a car, of the, of the Mercedes car. And they, first of all, will create a prototype, a model, an original model. That is what they call a prototype. That prototype is now what is duplicated and reproduced in several models. But the original is put in exposition or in, the, in display. And because so, when anything is wrong with that car or is broken or anything, they go to the original to study it. They go to the original, uh, no, no. Uh, you know, description, the original uh, manual that described the quality of that thing. So, if you want to know how any product functions, go and look at the model, the original, the prototype. Our prototype is God. And in that statement, let us make man in our own image. Tells us who our, our prototype is. It tells us who, who our prototype is. Our prototype is God himself. And if we are smart, if we are wise, we are supposed to be discovering what are the ways I could find out about my original person. You cannot know yourself until you know the original source that you come from. You can never discover yourself until you know your prototype, until you know your, your source, your essence. So you can never know yourself until you know God. You can never dis, the, the, you know, understand yourself until you understand God. You can never know how to live right until you begin to know how to live, to understand God. That's why that story that I spoke to you in the beginning, that we go to churches that don't longer tell us who God is. We go to churches who never tell us about he, how he looks. So we don't know how we should look. We we'll never go to we don't we go to churches now who don't tell us about who God is and we don't know who we are anymore. We go to churches where they never tell us about the character of God, so we don't know the character that we are supposed to be having. We go to churches where we don't longer know about the actions, behavior, and the attitudes of God. So we are all full of we have churches full of church members who don't have the right character, the right attitude, and the right response and reactions anymore. Why? We lose image. We lose the picture of how we are supposed to be. We need a mirror. We, that's why the Bible is like a mirror to us. When we read the Bible, we could see a reflection of the original person. That's why we have to read about Jesus. Because he's the original man. is the most perfect uh, expression of ideal God, of the original. is the, the most perfect reflection of the prototype in human flesh. And that is one of his most important mission on the earth. To live the God life, the ultimate life of the man in a human flesh so that we might be able to see him as a model and as a, as a perfect image of which we could look up to, copy, and know that we can live like him. 
That doesn't mean we're going to be perfect like him, but we have something to, 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 to move towards. We have something to aspire towards. We have something to pursue. But if we don't have that image, and if you are not reading the Bible for that image, for you to get the right image of God, the right understanding of God, you, God will be going on this direction, you will be going on that direction. We will be living opposite. You might be going to church, you might be a pastor, you might be a preacher, you might be a miracle worker, anything. But if you don't know that the Bible is given to you to be a model, a manual to, that reveals to you how you are supposed to live, you will never fulfill the original mandate while you are sent here. To be a reflection of God. How many times have you gone to a church where they have taught you that your ultimate purpose on the earth is to be a reflection of God? Even where they think they think they teach people about purpose, they only tell you that your purpose is to be a teacher, your purpose is to be an engineer, your purpose is to be uh, a computer scientist or something, your purpose is to be an artist and some. But that is secondary. The reason why you want to become an actor or an artist is so that you will be able to use art to express and reveal the image of the ultimate God. The reason you want to study computer science is so that through your trade, through your skill, through your mastery, through whatever specialty you have or your skills, you might be able to reveal and express God better. You might be able to talk to God about man so that you might be able to reveal his nature, his character, his, his essence. You are supposed to be the extension of God through your gift. You are supposed to be the extension of God through your, your, your abilities, through your skills. You are supposed to be the extension of God and those gifts and those talents are given to you for you to better express him, for you to best express him. For you to best communicate Him. Your gifts are for you to communicate God better. Your, 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 your abilities, your, 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 your talents are all put in you so that you might be able to express God better. Your ultimate idea on the earth is first of all to find out how the original looks. To find out the image of God. On daily basis to discover a new God, a new picture of God, a new nature of God, a new heart of God. To discover how he behaves, to discover what he likes, to discover what he doesn't like, to discover how you could be like him. So how you could be like him through what you know. How you could be like him through what you have. How you could be like him through your knowledge. How you could be like him through your understanding. How you could be like him through your uh, interaction. Through your relationship. Through your love. And if the Bible tells us something about God. Or that this is what God likes. Or about Jesus. About this work how Jesus behaves. It tells us this is how I'm supposed to behave. Now I can now use my gift to behave like that. How can I use my talent to express that? How can I use my ability to communicate that and all that? That is why we are created. And that's why we are giving all the abilities we've been given. We are not here just to survive. We are not here just to make a living. We were not sent here just to serve the elements of life. We are not here just to work for Uncle Sam. We are not here just to work for the world system. We are not here to be a system, to be a slave to anything. We are already a slave. We are already created by him and for him alone. We are here for his purpose. He created us in his own image. In his own likeness. What a honor. We don't hardly, we don't, we hardly even hear that in churches. What is the good in the church if you cannot hear the whole essence of your creation? What is the good in that church? What do we need such churches for? Religion is not doing you good. Religion is not doing us good. Don't let your Christianity be turned into religion. And I'm sorry to say, up to 90% of people in churches today, they are only familiar with religion. Not many of them, maybe if any, are actually familiar with the essence of God. 
the essence of faith. Most of us are there for what we could get from God. Most of us are there for what we will get from religion. Most of us are there for what we could get from heaven. Most of us are not there for what God created us for or for what he wants us to do or for what he wants us to serve, for the purpose that he wants us to serve. Most of us are going to church not for him. We don't even think about him. Whenever we think about him, we're only thinking about him in that he will give us something. He will bless us somehow. He will do some miracles for to us. But we are not going to church to discover his heartbeat, his desires, his longings, his intentions, his desires for the earth, for us. And it's a pity and it's a shame. And I think I must write a book on this. Why are we here? You are here, first of all, to discover God. Because when you discover God, you discover yourself. Because you are from Him. When you discover His nature, then you know your nature. When you discover His attributes, then you know the attributes to develop in yourself. When you discover His characteristics, then you know the characteristics that you must work on. When you read, when you discover his book, his, his, his manual, then you want to eat it from morning to night to discover new attributes of him, new qualities of him, new nature of his. And so that you know, oh, that's how I'm supposed to be. Oh, yeah, that's how I'm supposed to copy. Oh, that's what I'm supposed to develop in, in myself. Oh, I see. This is my life. You are supposed to remake yourself according to what you are discovering in God every day. You are supposed to be remaking yourself, rebuilding in yourself the true nature and image of God the Father himself. That is the whole essence of Christianity. So that I might better represent him, so that I might better reflect him, so that I will not be living my own life and he's living his own life, so that I will live his own, his, 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 I will model his life. I only want to live his life. And the only life that is worth living is his life. Because I am his extension. I am his continuation. I am his image. I'm supposed to express him. I'm supposed to reflect him. I'm supposed to uh, mirror him. And that's why nobody should be seeking God where I am there. Nobody should be seeking for God. I should only need to show up for people to know how God looks like. I should only need to speak for people to know what God looks like. So, the most paramount and the most primary reason why we are here is to model the Father, is to express the image of God, is to be the extension of the God, the Father, the extension of heaven, the extension of his environment. Next reason why we are here. We are here because God, who is love, and you see the most prominent character and characteristic of God is that God is love. And because it's love, the very first desire and the very first uh, necessity of love is to share. God is love and because he is love, he wants to share of himself. He wants to share himself. That's why he decided to duplicate himself on the earth. So he, 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 has a plan, he has a universe to himself. God is the Lord of the universe. So he created, he created a small universe, which is called planet, the planet Earth. He created the planet Earth for man and duplicated himself, miniature. We are miniature of God. The Earth is the miniature of heaven. So he created it as a miniature of the planet Earth and the, and the, the miniature, miniature of our universe and so that the the, the, the earth will eventually be made to become heaven, just like God made heaven to become the big heaven to be in heaven where he lives in. He made us to become the ones. He gave us the miniature of heaven in the Garden of Eden so that we will spread that and create, make heaven, the earth to become the miniature of heaven itself. And we were created to be his duplicate, to be his extension, to be his copy. His reproduction, his module, and you know, he shared himself in us. He shared himself, his nature in us. He duplicated his nature in us. But because we need to, because we have lost the Garden of Eden and we lost his that nature, we need to recreate that nature in ourselves by discovering him all over again. 
So that's why he created us in his love, in his image, to spread his love. So if you are a product of love, and if God is love, and that is his nature, and you are created as a duplication of his nature, it means you must seek for love. You must seek to understand love. Because if you understand love, you understand God. Because God is love. If you understand God, you will, you will understand love. And if you know God really, you will know love. If you know God, you will love people. If you really know God, you will seek to express love. If, in fact, your primary objective in life will be to discover love and to discover how you could use your gift, your talent, your ability, your capacity, your skills to express love. Because that is your nature. That is the most prominent of your nature. That is your image. That is the most prominent, the most, you know, the most auspicious of your, oh, the most prominent, the most visible, the most, you know, loud speaking of your nature. So that is the one you're supposed, you're supposed to concentrate on. And that's why when Jesus came, he said, you have only one commandment. Don't, keep, don't worry about all other commandments. Just one commandment. If you could discover love, if you could really love the one that loved you so much and that he gave you his image, if you could discover that the one that loved you so much that he gave you his life to redeem you and give you a second chance, if you could only discover the one that loved you so much that suffered the shame of the cross just to demonstrate his love for you, if you could discover that love, how much you are loved, you will know that there is nothing else that matters than to love him more, to, to love him back, to re replicate his love back to him, to make that love reciprocal, to, make, to, to, re to return that love back to him and say, if you will love me so much that you die for me, if you love me so much that you give me your image, if you will love me so much that you come to live in my heart and my soul, if you will love me so much that each time I fail, each time I fall, you will always draw me close, forgive me and wash me in your blood. If you will love me so much that you make your blood ever ready to forgive me. Oh, Jesus, I don't want any other thing other than to love you back. I don't desire any other thing other than to, play, to please you. To, this, to, to fulfill the desires of your heart, to seek your pleasure, to seek to pleasure you, to seek to do what you desire for me to do. I want to love you back as much as you have loved me. You loved me so much that you died for me. Even though you are not seeking for me to die for you, but I'm going to live for you. I'm going to live in such a way that my every day, every minute of my life will spread that love to you. You said to love you but not just to love you but that I should, I should love you by loving people because you live in people so that's why that is the only commandment only one commandment love God love people just one Love God and love gay people. If you will discover love, you have discovered God. If you have discovered God, you will discover love. And you will know that you are here to love. That's why you cannot be lazy. Because you are to love bad the one that has loved you. That's why you need your gift. That's why you need your calling. That's why you need your purpose. That's why you need your talent. So that you might use them to express your love. So that you might use those talents to speak the language of love. So that you might speak the language of love in a unique way. In a way that only you could speak it. With a gift that only you could speak it. In a way that you only you could express your talent to speak it. So that you might express love to humanity. So that you might express love to nature. You might express love to God. You might express love to believers and unbelievers. So if you would discover why you are here, you would discover that you are too important to be insignificant. You are too important to be going to church and just wait on God and become a parasite on God. No, no, no. God is waiting on you to express him. He created you to express him. He created you to love him to help you him love the world to help him reveal his nature and you are here instead of you to be busy revealing his nature instead of you to be here be, be busy talking revealing his love you are busy going to cry to him day and night to see asking him for something he's already giving you everything for you to express his nature he's already giving you everything for you to be able to carry out your, your mission on the earth he's already giving you all things that you need 
need for godliness. He is already giving you everything that you need to be able to fulfill your mission on earth. Now you are expressing such indolence, such laziness that you are just going to beg him to, be, to do this for you, to do this for you, as if he has never done anything to you for you. You are insulting God so much that he is never giving you enough, that he's never blessed you enough, that he didn't give you enough talent, that he didn't give you enough gift, that he didn't give you enough of himself, that he didn't give you enough of his, of his word, of his Bible. What do you mean? Who are you to dare insult God that way? And we have turned churches to centers of paralysis, para, 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 parasite, paratism. We have, we have turned church to a center of inability, inval, inval, invalidness, and inval, invalidity, invalidness. You know, in, you know in, in, we, have, we have turned into a center of inability, it's a center, a, a place where people are just helpless, hopeless, and, and totally, you know, you know, totally happiness. They are the people who cannot make anything happen. We have turned the church to a place of just hopelessness. Utter disillusionment. People where people just come to express disillusionment. Where they just come to express their weariness, their hopelessness, their you know, they are they, they are just I don't know what language my language is not enough. You know, we that's not what it's supposed to be. If the church is supposed to be a place where we go to renew our strength, to see him better, to get a better image of him, to understand him better, so that we might go out from Monday. And we express him better. So that when we go out on Monday, we will now be full of his grace and his renewed energy, his renewed power in us. That we now say we are ready to roar. We are ready to fly. We are ready to soar. We have seen him better. We have seen a better picture of him. We have now understood how we could better express him. I'm afraid the church has missed God so much. We don't even have an idea why we have God. We don't have even an idea of why we are here. We don't even have an idea of why we have church anymore. We don't even have an idea of why we are doing all we, what we are doing anymore. Everybody is just thinking about hell. It's not about hell. Nothing about hell in the in the in the in the Garden of Eden. And I spoke to you why that is important. Why first two chapters of the Bible are important. I spoke to you about that in the morning. So you know, it's not about that. It's about God's needs. It's about God's desires. It's about God's heart cry. What? what what is going through the heart of God on a daily basis about you? Are you so much disconnected with God that you are not even aware of what his thoughts are concerning you? What is expecting from you? We are so carried away by mundane things of life. That somebody wants to, everybody wants to marry, they want to have children, they want to have their own family, and that's all. We, nobody cares about his desires anymore. Nobody worries about his worries anymore. Nobody cares for his concerns. Nobody cares for his burden. Nobody cares for what, what he wants to be done. Nobody is even busy with his agenda anymore. We are just being brainwashed by all kind of preaching and all kind of religious, you know, grammar and all kind of religious, you know, uh, 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 renditions that don't even have anything to do with the heart of God or what God wants or desires for us in the first place. We are so deceived by God. Help us. Oh, help us. Help us to paint a picture of a new church. Oh, help the church to come back to living for you, my God. Help us, oh dear Father, to help the church wake up. Help us, oh my dear Father, to bring a new knowledge, a new understanding, a fresh image of the church. Oh, help us to begin to see your heart once again. Help us, Father, to begin to know and discover and understand what you want for us and why we are here in the first place. Oh, help us to stop beating about the bush. Oh, help us to begin to, be, to, to stop living by the standards of the world. Oh, help us that we might not use the world to be our standards any longer. Oh, Jesus, help us that we will use you to be our standard, that we will use heaven to be our standard that heaven will be the our our order our our point of order so that we will be receiving our order only from heaven not more from the earth oh dear father 
Oh Lord, open our eyes, remove the blindness, remove the veil that has covered the church, that has covered each and every one of us. Oh, reveal, re remove that veil, my God. Reveal, remove the veil and cause the church to begin to see, cause our leaders to begin to go back to your heart, that your heart desire, the things that you want, to begin to understand the scripture. We have lost the understanding of the scripture, of the Bible. We don't have an idea why we're reading. We don't see the general picture anymore. We are only seeing fragments, fragments. And we are only talking about good preaching, good talk, and good message, this revelation, that revelation. But we don't see the general picture of the heart of God anymore. But Father, help your people to begin to see your general picture. That you created us here for a purpose. You sent us here to represent you. You sent us here to reveal your image. You sent us here to be the expression of who you are. God is in heaven. He wanted to reduplicate himself on the earth. Just like he reigns and rules on the, in heaven and over the universe. He wanted somebody who would be his image. And that image he decided to put in everyone, each and every one of us. He wants us to be his image. And his image are we, each one of us are the ones to be revealing him. He wants to see himself in operation here on earth. Through each and every one that is his image. Through each and every one that he calls his son and his daughter. He wants each and every one of us to be the one that is expressing him. He wants to take joy in seeing us express his nature. He wants to begin to take pleasure in us revealing him. You know, being his demonstration. Being his manifestation. Being his image. He wants to take pleasure in that. He wants to see us similar to him. Resemble him. He wants to see see his nature, his behavior in us. He wants to see us reacting like him. He wants to see us acting like him. He wants to see us, you know, walking the world like him. He wants to see us seeing him in the Bible. He wants to see us imitating him. He wants to see us copying him. He wants to see us being his image and his likeness. He, that is why he created us in the first place, to be his image and his likeness. And prayers, what have we turned prayers to? It's horrible. What have we turned prayers to? We have turned prayers to begging God for this and for that. And that's what Jesus said. Don't be like the Gentiles. The Gentiles are the ones who are repeating, repeating prayer requests, repeating and begging God and shouting over and over again and repeating what they need. But don't be like them. You have a caring father. If you have relationship with him, if you really understand him and his heart, if you are living the way he wants you to live, you will not need to be like the Gentiles begging God. Our prayers are now being more modeled after the Gentiles' prayers than after God's prayer, after what God desires. Because the real essence of prayer is not to ask something from God. The real essence of prayer is not to be begging God for something. The real essence of prayer is not to receive miracle or blessing or healing. No, no, no. That is how the Gentiles approach prayers. The real essence of prayer is for us to be in His presence. It's for us to incubate ourselves in Him. And through that prayer incubation, so that we might see him better, clearer. Through that prayer incubation, we might arise in his image. We might be able to, uh, you know, to imbibe his image and his nature better in ourselves. So that through prayers, we might build relationship with him. So that through prayers, we might become friends with him. So that through prayers, we might get to know him better. So that through prayers, we might have his own kind of heart. So that through prayers, we might begin to understand what he desires, what his will is, and what his desires are. So that through prayers, we might know his heart, we might feel his heartbeat. So that through prayers, we might know what to do and what he expects from us. So that through prayers, we might know how to better please him, to how to better be like him. So that through prayers, we might better express him, we might better manifest him. So that through prayers, we might be able to carry him better. That is all what prayer was supposed to be about in the first place. What are we on prayer to? Witchcraft chanting, you know, witchcraft 
causing prayer, you know, causing for other people, you know, praying against. I saw one bad man of God wrote something today. You know, this is a big man of God. He said, you know, the, the, the quotation, I can't remember the quotation. It's something like, everybody that does not want you to succeed or anybody that does not want uh, to see your success, uh, the person should, should not leave to see your success or something like that. What's that about? What's that about? What's that about? That is an ex the expression of the fact that we are living for ourselves. That is the expression of the fact that I am the center of my life. It's all about me. It's not about him. It's all about me. Anybody who doesn't want to see my success, my success, it's about me and my success. You are not created for, your, for you or for your success or just for about you. Life is not supposed to be about you in the first place. That's why we die in the first place. Life is not supposed to be about me or about you, about what I want, about what you want. Life is supposed to be about him in the first place. Life is supposed to be about his desires. He created me for his purpose. He created you for his desires. His life is all supposed to be about him in the first place. It is only after you have dedicated yourself to pleasing him, to seeking to please him, to seeking to advance his kingdom, to seeking to establish in his kingdom. Oh my God, so few people do this. <laughs> only when you have done your best on a daily basis and you are doing your best to live for him, glorify him, you are so dedicated to his purpose and his agenda and it's only him and his purpose you are after then all other things will automatically be added to you. All other things will be an addition. But when you put yourself, not him and his desires, not his kingdom and expansion and the growth of his kingdom, when it's, that is not what is at the center of your life, when it is you that is the center of your life, that's why you'll be praying those kind of prayers. Anybody who doesn't want to see my success should not, should, should not live to see my success. Should die. Should not live to... No, if you are really after God's heart, you should say, anybody that does not want me to, to succeed, anybody that does not want to see my... No, no, me, anybody that does not want me to succeed, that God help them. Help them to be alive. Keep them alive. Give them strength. Give them healing. Give them you know, strength so that they will live to see this my success. And once they see my success, so that you will be able to help me for them to help them to also be successful. Help me to help them to be successful as well. Help me to help them to be able to understand your heart. It's not supposed to be about me. And if you are saying that people who don't want to see your success should die, or who don't, who don't want you to see your success shouldn't live to see your success, what about if it's your mom that doesn't want to see your success in that place because he doesn't believe in what you are doing? Let's say your, what you are, your, the success you are after is that you will become an engineer and your mom and your dad wants you to become a medical doctor. So they don't want to see your success in that sense. They want to see your success in other area. So they should also die. But maybe it's your husband or your wife that doesn't want to see your success because your wife believes that that success that you are after is not a good thing for you and that it's not, you are not doing the will of God, that it's going to be hurtful to her or to the family. And now you are saying she shouldn't live to see it. So you are praying for your family to die, for your wife to die, for your children to die, for your relatives to die. So, you know, all those kind of things don't reveal the heart of God at all. And that shows that we are egocentric. We are not living, we are not about living for the image of God to be expressed. We are not living for the purpose of God to be established. We are not living to seek His will and His agenda. We are not about heaven's agenda anymore. It's all about us. So we are only using God to fulfill our own desires. We are only exploiting God. We're only using God to, to accomplish our own egocentric, our gospel. You know, some of us that are listening to me, you think you are okay. But I think we all need to shake ourselves all over again. Because the gospel you have been fed with, you know, has polluted you without even you knowing it. And you will say, how am I different? Well, God help me. Because I was only a believer, a Christian in Nigeria for six months. I got saved in March or something. And by September, I left the country. So no, I was, I've never been a church member. So the only thing I knew was to read the Bible. And I started reading the Bible you know, after I got saved, and that's the only thing I had. 
and so I could, express, I could understand God from a fresh eye. But people are copying each other. People are believing what some pastors are teaching them. And some of those things don't have anything to do with God anymore. We are so, so far from God. So, so far from God. So, so far from the heart of God, you will not believe it. That's why we are no more looking like, like him. That's why we don't, people don't see him in us anymore. That's why people... <laughs> People don't even see his image in us. People don't want to be like us even. We are not attractive to God, to, to people as God's people. We are not expressing his image. We are not carrying him in. People don't see him in us. Because we are not even living for him in the first place. We are living for ourselves. The church has lost it so much. Well, I only have a few minutes left. You know, I'm done. I'm done. I, I, I just want to hear what you will say. Let me hear what you say. I want to hear your, your what did you get from this message? What did you get from this, this, this message? I want to uh, see what you are writing. Um, will you please write your, your opinion and your thought? Will you write what you think about what you, what you are hearing. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you agree. Maybe you are changing. You are taking some decisions about, about your life. Maybe something is going to change in your life. Maybe you are going to, what's going through your mind? Will you write something? Write me something. No, don't be writing me yourself. Okay, you are great. You are good. You are good preaching. Those are not the things I'm talking about. What is happening to your heart? Are you being broken by God? Are you being touched? What is happening? What are you understanding from, from what you are hearing? Jacob Sane says, We have all things we need to express God here and also to live a kingdom lifestyle. God help us. Uh... Basil says, we are here to spread his nature because that is his own personal pleasure. Obina says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. That's the nature of God. Sufficient says, the bride of Christ, the church, has been turned into a beggar. This is a call for reawakening, a call for the church to get back on her feet and take a rightful position. Shao says, fellowship is the real essence of prayer. Bukola says, this revelation is just too awesome. Praise God. Lyo says, we should tweet. Send out the tweet. The real essence of prayer is not to beg God for something or ask for a miracle. The real essence of prayer is to be in his presence. Pastor Sunday. Shao says, uh, life is supposed to be about God and not you. Go help us, God. Uh, Lyo says, Oh Lord, the heart of a man in love with, God, with Jesus. We are learning. Basile says, yes, we learn every day. We will not kill our family with our lives. Seek his presence, then we will see, see Clara. Favor says, Mark eleven seventeen. we have made God's church a den of robbers instead of the house of prayer. We need to turn to correct teachings and doctrine, living according to the will of God, living a life that is aligned to the purpose of God. Tatiana says, life is not about me, it's about him. Nkem says, Christ-likeness attracts. I, Pastor Iron says, oh Lord, have mercy, draw your bride to you and help her to run after your heart. Laulu says, the church has lost her saltness. Yetunde says, help us, O Lord, bring us back to you. We want to come back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. O Lucario, they said, I'm broken. Broken. Yes, that's it. I'm broken. Irene says, the desire to express my Lord is burning in me like fire now. Thank God. Bukola says, yes, I'm broken too. Now understand God's purpose for creation.
Thank you, Pastor. And some of these people might have been going to church for years and for ages. Some of them have been going to church for decades and they don't even have an idea about why we are here. Oh my God, help us. Oh Jesus, I'm so overwhelmed. How much messages will I need to preach for this to get to your people? How much work I'll need to do to really pay, present a new church to you, Jesus? Help us. Nkem says, a new light and understanding I received this night. That is worth pondering on, especially the part of praying for those who don't want us to succeed to die. Sami says, I'm going to start carrying the image of God. I'm so blessed. I'm going to change my way of prayer life. Matthew says, I have to make some changes, especially in the way I pray. Ejekwe said, how do we then restore the real love and fellowship in the church when there is no agreement among the leaders? Shegun Lawal said, this is one of the reasons why instead of people living to represent God, we are looking for the worldly identity because we don't have the identity of God. The world has become the definer, the one that defines us and defines our identity. Pastor Bolaji says, you have said it also. It's God that's the center of it all. But the reverse is the case in many churches now. My prayer is that when the world looks at me, will they see Jesus' reflection? We need a heart. We need a new heart to fulfill this. Tony Richardson says, my heart is so filled that I want to start doing the right thing and living like him. Samuel Kalu says, Pastor, it's sad that the truth you are teaching and expounding is lacking in most of our pulpits today. May God take us back to the place of doing His will and expressing Him. Kike says, All things are created for His pleasure, falling in love with you, Lord, all over again. Felix Paul says, Nena Felix Paul says, Please pray for me. Let God give me the grace to bear my husband's sudden death. Oh my God. Ooh. We pray that God will overwhelm you right now, Nena, with his reality, with his, with his, with his grace. You know, Nena, can you write me? Write to uh, pastor at godembassy.org. Pastor at godembassy, godembassy one word, godembassy.org. Please write to me and tell me about your situation. I'm going to call you. If you can, send me your Skype number as well, or your telephone number. I will call you, okay? Ola Bamiji says, I did not watch from the beginning, please. How can I watch the full message? The full message will be on this Facebook page. It will be the first thing on this Facebook page, so you can always go there to copy and copy the link. I mean, not copy the link, what is it? Share the link with your friends. You must, all of us should go and share the link for this message. But apart from that, you can also go and to my uh, Facebook, uh, to my uh, YouTube page and see the message there or to my blog, sundadelajablog.org. Galina says, I found that I often spend my time in prayers not like I should and like God wants from me. Rosemary says, God bless you, sir. I have really learned a lot tonight. Yet some they say, I can't stop crying, Pastor. This message has touched something in my heart. Whew, I too am broken here. Lyo says, Oh Lord Jesus, this is a forceful revelation, revolution that will reverberate across several families across the globe and change these families. Uh, an atmosphere was created in our home tonight. And our hearts are being drawn to God again in a special way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ayodeji is saying, God is love. We are wired and designed by God to love every creature, both Christians and non-Christians. It's not God's will that our enemies should die, but sometimes we need to stop them. Uh, well, Ernest Ebong says, it is pathetic when one listens to some messages coming from some pulpits these days. God has more, have mercy and help, people, help pastors come to understand Oh, to the understanding of why we are here on earth. I pray, I pray, I pray, oh Lord, have mercy. 
Oluwayomi says, Pastor, you just pour out my heart desire. We Christians are God's extension on earth. God needs his sons and daughters to carry out his kingdom task on earth. That is why Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mkem says, okay, this is to Nena. Uh, Moses, God created me for himself and not himself for me. I am going to love him in all things. Life is not about me, but about God. And I cannot please God without loving all people. Natalia Kolida said, to follow Christ means to pay price. Today's church, today's church helps people to relax, not to pay price. We need to hear more about what you, Pastor, was talking about. We need to raise Christ, raise standard in his church. To him be the glory. To be like him. Obis Ojimadu said, can we really say we are Christ-like? What are we taught in our churches? Uh, have we been turned from children of God into beggars? Have we not been turned into beggars and miracle seekers? It's time to search our heart and soul. God have mercy on us. Oh, favor says it's going to know. It's good to know there is still a remnant. Mm -hmm. Shegun says this, that is why God is sending you to Nigeria, sir. We have many churches, but it's like there is none because we are living for ourselves, not for Him. Oh, God help us. And then says I'm just weeping. Someone says I have a new perspective to ministry tonight. Never heard it like this before for my whole 40 years of ministry of life and more years of attending church. I receive confidence about who and whose I am. Wow. I, this session is going, this series is going to be a long one, I guess. This is going to be a long one. Tomorrow I'll be talking about why planet Earth? Why did God create planet Earth? Today I spoke about why are we here? Tomorrow I'm going to say, why Earth? Why planet Earth? Why was planet Earth created? What is the purpose of the Earth? I'm so sorry. I'm so overwhelmed. Good night. Please go share the message. Go share the message. Maybe somebody will be blessed. Thank you.